Wake up, everybody. Never free to play here with a short news segment. Uh, we wanted to cover a couple of news items today, starting off with some news out of Blizzard. You know, everyone's favorite, absolutely not favorite company right now, but they apparently are working on a new IP. Uh, recent news has come to light that Blizzard is hiring for a brand new survival type game set in an IP uh, that is different from its current properties. Uh, survival games have been kind of growing in popularity as of late, especially on the indie circuit. Uh, <laughs> we'll start. Karch, any thoughts on this? Uh, um, yeah, I got some <sighs> thoughts. Blizzard sucks. All right. And I'm not a fan of survival uh, anything. Um, it's hard enough to survive in real life. I don't want to do it in my video games, too. There's no, there's no kind of escapism when I have to just live another day in a video game. But no, I, um, I don't think... This doesn't excite me because there's nothing to be excited about. It's like, hey, I mean, oh, a new Blizzard IP. How many times have we heard that? And then literally nothing's come of it. And yeah. so, like, and even if something does come of it, I guess, I mean, the last time I had a new IP, Overwatch really knocked it out of the park. And yet I still have no confidence because of how they've dealt with Overwatch since then and how they've dealt with every one of their other super, super successful, well-beloved IPs and just kind of, like, grinded them into the ground. So that's how I feel about it. All right. Uh Jason? Um, I will be dissenting here because I, you know, a couple couple factoids to start off with. So, Overwatch was their last major uh, release, which was 2016. As far as I can tell, nothing's really been majorly released other than the remake of Diablo 2, which was a studio they ended up requiring, uh, acquiring later. But Diablo, and then there's really nothing on the horizon either. Like Diablo Immortal is their only game launching this year. There's a mobile, not uh, a mobile game version of Diablo, so that's weird. Uh, with well, this, Overwatch Two is always being talked about as being in the works, right? But it's yeah. not set for release this year. Correct, as far as we know. Um, I mean, neither is this game. So this, exactly, we won't see this for five years probably i know and and you know what's also it, this made news but it was a really low-key release on their part because they just kind of put this blurb out there on their dev page yep. uh it had two pieces of art it had a hunter following some sort of like technicolor footprints with a mirror like portal in the background that showed a more modern looking world and then the other piece of art was a more modern looking still forest environment with a floating castle up in the horizon and there were two people in kind of modern looking clothes um With bikes like they were walking through a forest portal like a fake crossroad right so i thought that was i was the, thought that was interesting so i guess what i'll say about this is that i've personally never been drawn to to blizzard games for the storytelling uh, but they are historically great at world building so i think the survival genre lends itself to that type of game because you can make the world more important than the story and immerse yourself in that so I guess I mean if they come out with something, I'm excited to see it. I'm interested to learn how it pans out given the pending sell to Microsoft. But that's kind of my thoughts on it. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Robert, uh, out here. Pro, you know, pro or con? Break the tie. <laughs> you haven't actually spoken on it yet, so <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm a uh, I'm, I'm a neutral newscaster. I'm your there you go. I'm your Lester Holt. <laughs> Well, I'm I, I'm afraid I don't I'm not gonna break too much yet because I'm I have to see more before I make a decision. I, right now, I don't want to play another Blizzard game, but like I could easily be inceptioned into wanting to play it <laughs> if I see enough of it, and then even if it's bad, I'll probably end up doing it. However, if it's like stupid in a way that I don't like the gameplay or I don't like the plot, then I'm not gonna touch it. Robert being wonderfully moderate, uh, I will come out here and basically say that, one, I'm not playing any Blizzard game or Activision game right now with everything else going on. Uh, this is far enough out that ideally that'll all be resolved and that won't be a problem. But also, I always dislike the fantasy genre of like, oh, it's the real world and you find yourself in fantasy. No, that's crap. I hate that genre. Build your own entirely fantasy world without our world a part of it. Agreed. The so. Japanese word for that is isekai. Oh, interesting. interesting. And it's my least favorite genre of like japanese medium as well so i also hate that. it's so, exactly exactly that was a really good impression robert moving on to our second piece of news room also somewhat blizzard related in the sense that it involves ex blizzard developers who went and founded frost giant studios back in 2022 have announced one that they've pulled together over 35 million in funding and two the game they're working on is going to be an rts uh, for, for quick summer here, the the ex Blizzard devs we're talking about were involved in both StarCraft Two and the campaign for WarCraft Three, so they have quite the RTS pedigree. Uh, we'll go ahead, and this time we'll start with Jason. How does you feel about this? 
<laughs> so one interesting thing that that Sean didn't say yet is that Jason Schreier tweeted that that there have been rumblings uh, out there in the in the ether that say that Kodak would not fund an RTS game because he said it wouldn't make enough money. So it's interesting. We we have these developers who are passionate enough about the genre to leave. They want to make the next big PC RTS. They say that our influences this is a quote. Our influences will be Warcraft Three, Brood War, and Starcraft Two. We expect to be as different as those games are to each other. So I'm interested to see what they come up with. I personally suck at real-time strategy games. Um, the way they talk, it seems like it's going to be a fully-fledged AAA caliber game, but we've also seen former devs' projects end up coming out something more indie, like in the case of It Lurks Below, uh, which was a game developed by the creator of Diablo, David Brevik. So I'll, I'll be interested to see how this how this plays out. Karch, thoughts? Game developers that leave big studios and then make their own little smaller studio and want money on Kickstarter always create really middling results. I'm struggling to think of a single situation, whether I wanted it to or not, where this was like, oh yeah, this is exactly what everyone hoped it would be. Um, Because it never is. The ukulele guys from the old Rare studio, uh, Mighty Number... Visage, Mighty Number no. Nine, um, Bloodstained with uh, the the Castlevania guy. I forget his name off the top of my head. That was fairly successful, but it's always a very like only in that small like nin not indie indie style niche, um, and so it's just like and, and an RTS to boot, which is something I just don't play anymore. I might go play StarCraft Two because I didn't ever got around to playing through the whole story, but like that's only because of the pedigree and history I have with that that uh, series. It's not because I need to play an RTS. So like, I hope they're successful, and I think they could easily find success depending on the scope of this project and and what they're expecting out of it. But it's not going to be like a. It's not going to be a no. No, it's not going to be a StarCraft Two or a StarCraft Three. Because oh yeah, one word: Torchlight. Torchlight did so well. Oh wait, no, Torchlight did not do so well. <laughs> Yeah, my uh, my quick thoughts on this before before I let Robert finish this up uh, are, A, I do find it interesting because we just got Age of Empires 4, so there is a little bit, I guess, uptick potentially in interest in RTSs, but it's also worth noting that that 35 million or, you know, a little bit less than 35 million only allowed them to go from 30 to 50 developers, so it's not like it's bringing them up to the level of a AAA studio, uh, which I think just reinforces Karch's point. Uh, mm -hmm. Robert, what are your thoughts? I, I, I just agree 100% with you guys. So, I got nothing else to add. You already did it. I agree. Right. Yeah. Uh, that wraps up our quick news spotlight for this week. Uh, as always, hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see a quick roundup for you guys that are never free to play of the news each week. Uh, we'll get back to it. But as always, we are never free to play. Bye Tell us in the week. comments who you hate the most. Yeah. <laughs> Stop me. Recording now. Recording. Are you ready? You this recording? The, we're the, yeah, we're recording. This Why is, are we using Craig? We're not. I said that. I said blue doo doo. That I said. Uh, <laughs> that's such a good impression. <laughs>